<coughs> Welcome to worship at Lutheran Church of the Resurrection. We are gathered by Christ, dwelling in faith, sent to serve, and empowered to witness. Our faith community welcomes all individuals, regardless of race, sex, gender identification, sexual orientation, economic status, age, disability, or family makeup. Child of God, you are welcome here. Welcome. Do we have any um, prayers of concerns, thanksgiving? Yes, Clyde. Okay, so for Car uh, Carol Blau, who's in the hospital. Okay, Jerry, and also some prayers for Jerry. Yes. There's a card for Carol. Oh, there's a card for Carol? Yeah. Yeah, Somebody was on the ball. Betty, she's Oh, okay, Betty. Okay, Heidi. Okay, so a friend of uh, Heidi's, she, who we may, she has uh, breast cancer. Yes? Betty's doing very well. I talked to her yesterday, and she'll be back next week. Yay, <laughs> Betty will be back next week. Not that, yeah, not, no, yes, yeah, Thanksgiving for Diane, for her wonderful piano playing, although, to be honest with you, I knew all about the piano playing. <laughs> I just left it a secret. Um, prayers for my friend Leslie. She was just diagnosed with peritoneal cancer. Ooh. Okay. Prayers for Leslie, who was diagnosed with uh, peritoneal cancer. Yes. Prayers. Prayers at Thanksgiving. My son has almost been in the job for two weeks, but he's been employed. After a long time of being employed for two weeks, it's going well, and keep your fingers crossed. Okay. Patricia Simmons, who now has a new job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. mm -hmm. We know all that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, continuing prayers for all for for Scott and John and for Yes, for all those suffering from cancer, for Scott and John and Kim and Kathy. All right, anything else? Okay. Please rise as you are able for the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking a God's abundance, let us confess our sin. Our God, our provider, help us it is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when we differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for the life in the world. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, we are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, we are shown God's mercy. We are forgiven and loved in abundant life. Amen. Amen. The beauty of the Creator inspired us. The grace of the Good Shepherd be with us and the unity of the breath of life enfold us all. May it be so. Our first hymn, Lord, you give us the Great Commission, in the uh, Blue Book, 756, we are only singing the first three verses. Okay, first three verses.
Please be seated. Let us pray. God of the covenant, in our baptism, you call us to proclaim the coming of your kingdom. Give us the courage you gave the apostles, that we may faithfully witness to your love and peace in every circumstance of life. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Ezekiel. A voice said to me, O mortal, stand up on your feet, and I will speak with you. And when he spoke to me, a spirit entered into me and set me on my feet, and I heard him speaking to me. He said to me, Mortal, I am sending you to the people of Israel, to a nation of rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have transgressed against me to this very day. The descendants are impudent and stubborn. I am sending you to them, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are a rebellious house, they shall know that there has been a prophet among them. The word of the Lord. A reading from 2 Corinthians. I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that such a person, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. I was caught up into paradise and heard things that are not to be told that no mortal is permitted to repeat. On behalf of such a one I will boast, but on my behalf I will not boast, except of my weaknesses. But if I wish to boast, I will not be a fool, so I will be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it, so that no one may think better of me than what is seen in me or heard from me. Even considering the exceptional character of the revelations, Therefore, to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise as you are able for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, Where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? And, not, and are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor, except in their hometown, and among their own kin, and in their own house. And he could do no deed in power there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went out among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. 
And he said to them, whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as testimony against them. And so they went out and proclaimed all that they should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. Anyone that would like to come up and join me? If not, that's okay. We're coming. Okay. We're coming. Good mood. Are you in a good mood? She's awake. She's awake. That's always better. I'm not going to sit because if I sit, I'm not going to get back up. So. No, see, you're more courageous than mine. Have you guys ever been invited over to stay over at somebody's house, a friend's house? Mm -hmm. Did you have a fun time? Yeah, okay. Was it nice to feel wanted? Mm -hmm. When you are with friends and people that you know, I'm sure that you're treated just like family, right? And you're included in all their activities. Probably even told when to go to bed, right? Yep. <laughs> I'm sure you felt welcome and love, right? Maybe. Imagine going to a stranger's house. Wouldn't that be scary? Would you be able to do that? I don't think I would be able to do that. In fact, in these times, we're told not to go to strange people. When I was a Girl Scout, we used to go all over the neighborhood and knock on, we never went into their homes, but we knocked on doors and asked if they would buy Girl Scout cookies. Now we don't do that. No, we don't. But Jesus told his disciples to go to strangers' homes. Go out, spread the good news about Jesus' teaching. Do you remember what I said about the disciples when they weren't welcome? What were they supposed to do? Do you remember? When you forgot something with their... Yeah, yeah, they just shake off the dust. Have you, you got, look, look, we have sandals, we have some flip-flops. Isn't it kind of yucky when you walk in places and you get the gravel in your shoes and the dust in your shoes? Yeah. Well, that's what Jesus' disciples were to shake off, all that yucky stuff. And he had them leave all that dirt and grime at their homes if they were not welcomed. Do you think that's kind of rude? We would think that might be rude now, right? But really, that's, that's not rude because weren't the people that they were going into their homes, weren't they kind of rude to them, to the disciples by not welcoming them? Not everybody was ready to hear Jesus' words. And even in our own times, people might not be ready to hear his message. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, let us be more open to hearing God's message. Help us to be welcoming to people that we may not know, so we are able to spread your word. Amen. Well, thank you both for coming up. You need help? Oh, no, look at you. Oh, look at you. I wouldn't be able to be that graceful getting up. You do not want to see me try to get up. Believe me. May the words of my mouth be acceptable to you, O Lord. Who is this man? Isn't he the carpenter? Isn't this our Jesus? How did this boy from here come to speak of this wisdom to us? Where did he get these powers to heal the sick? Isn't he the son of Mary? The brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon and his sisters? In Jesus' time, one was referred to the son of the father. So he would be referred to the son of Joseph, not the son of Mary. So when they made this comment, they were implying of Jesus' legitimacy, even though 
we knew that was to be the truth, but it was speaking of his parentage. Jesus' own brothers and sisters did not accept Jesus' message. I, I can't imagine that. Has anyone had their brother and sister not support them in what they did? I, I can't because that's, you know, we, we might not all get along, but you kind of support each other. And that's what family is all about. Jesus found it very hard to go back home. He was rejected by his own people. Have any of you experienced being rejected by your hometown? Ah! <laughs> Step family. Yeah, by family. Yep. I can't say that I had that problem because I really never left hometown. I grew up in Levittown. I went to Westchester University. And I had to admit, it was kind of hard coming back home after living in college for four and a half years. The last year, living in my own apartment, having my own rules, when to come in at night, and then coming back home and having to follow my parents' rules. You are to be home at midnight. Like, what? That's not what happened when I was in school. Sorry, man. But I never really had to prove myself in my hometown. The only thing I could use was not being hired by the school district that I grew up in. But perhaps God had a plan for me after all. I was hired in Morrisville, and I made lifelong friends. Being rejected by your hometown had to hurt Jesus very much. In fact, in Luke chapter 4, it was so bad that the people of Nazareth would have been, um, rejected him and tried to throw him off a cliff. So. That's not so fun. I'm not sure if I've been able to, or even want to, go on with ministry if my family and my hometown were against me and wanted to maybe throw me off the cliff. I don't know, or stone me. Not only was rejected, but he knew that his di disciples would not be accepted either. He prepared them for such cases. Sending out the disciples in pairs must have given them some comfort knowing that they would not be alone in their mission. But they must have seen the rejection that Jesus received. They must have felt part of that rejection. It probably reflected a little bit on them. How much harder it must have been for them to be sent out to teach, cure, preach, and to cast out demons they were sent with their bare essentials, sandals, that's a given, a tunic, yeah, well, that would be good, and a staff. Now, I guess a staff could be handy if they encountered any wild animals along the drive or, you know, or using it as a walking stick, but, yeah, I'm not sure how much a staff's going to really do. The disciples were to stay at each home until they decided that it was time for them to leave. This could get a little uncomfortable, I would think. Um, excuse me, we'd like to stay a couple more days. I hope you have plenty of food. The disciples were to be gracious when welcome, but woe to those who did not welcome them. They were to shake off the dust. The roads were pretty dusty, after all, when they left. I wonder if this was more of the insult for the neighbors to see than for anything else. Jesus gave his disciples, before sending them out, the power to heal and cast out demons. And just what do you think those disciples think? What are these new powers? You want us to do what? What if we were rejected? You know what? Jesus has done the same with us. No. We're not have the ability to heal or cast out demons or just but we are given the opportunity to spread God's word through our works here at LCR. LCR has many missions that help so many people all the time. Our Stephen ministers are ready to listen and pray 
for you and with you. We make and provide lunches for those who are hungry. And our garden provides vegetables for those in need. Our quilters and our fiber arts create beautiful and comforting shawls and quilts and blankets for all those who need their comfort. We have a grief group that's here for those who have need. In LCR, we do what Jesus has asked. I can't imagine any of us who plant, knit, quilt, guide, lead, and pray feel rejected. We shouldn't. And if we do, I'm a teacher, I have to have props. Then we should just shake our sandals at them. Amen. <laughs> Okay, the hymn of the day has been changed. We are in the green book, right? Yes. yes. Okay, we're doing 429, so it's not real far away, those of you that have gone ahead. And instead of singing 100 verses, we're only singing four. So just the first four. Let's confess the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the God, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things remain. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in his accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, 
and the life of the world to come. Amen. One in the communion of saints and the power of the Holy Spirit, we join our voices in prayer. Glorious God, you bend down to wash the feet of your disciples. Let the servant church arise in our teaching, our praying, our healing, and our doing. Make all your faithful people powerful in weakness and strong in grace. In your mercy. Life-giving God, your fingers trace the heavens and your hands mold the earth. Where there is drought, bring nourishing rain. Where there is devastation from fire or flood, bring relief. Sustain the well-being of every living thing in your mercy. Merciful God, you speak and the nations listen. Open those who govern to the cries of all who journey with no food or shelter, particularly people fleeing violence, those seeking freedom and those in search of community. We pray for immigrants and refugees, for all who work with them. In your mercy. Gracious God, your embrace brings wholeness to those who are troubled. Anoint all who suffer in any way with the oil of healing and grant them renewal. In your mercy. Welcoming God, in your presence, strangers become companions and enemies become neighbors. Open our doors to those we have so easily shut out, particularly people who are different from us or who are marginalized by church or society. In your mercy. <coughs> Eternal God, you gather us into your house <coughs> of many dwelling places. We give you thanks for our faithful departed. Inspire us for their lives of faith until, with them, we rest forever at journey's end. In your mercy. Yeah. Holy God, holy and merciful, into your outstretched arms we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in the one who is the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. The peace of Christ be with you all. Passing in the peace. <laughs> we thank you, thank you for your continuing faithfulness and giving generously and take the time here and now to lift up God's goodness and all God's good gifts. Offerings may be made through the offering plate, mail, or electronically, including the online giving plat platform, Tithely. We thank you for supporting our mission, community outreach, and the mission of our larger Lutheran church. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you give us your very self and call us to share our gifts. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us with your grace. Make us to be your body for the life of the world. Amen. Lord, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us, be upon us now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. We are the body of Christ. Okay. No surprises on this one. We are singing all three verses in the blue book, 755. <laughs>